This video will demonstrate how to call smart contracts from the front end. My name is Hakim and I'm a Web3 engineer working for eBay and my mission is to educate you on Web3 development in e-commerce. So let's begin. In the previous video, we deployed an NFT smart contract that I'll show you right now. Head over to the MetaMask wallet, deployment. So th this is the transaction details here. And if you head over to do, 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 do. Uh, and this is the actual contract itself and it's tracking the nft that we made yesterday and if i click on it we can see the holders so how do we actually call this for my front end and to the left here i have a react application template that i made using chat gpt and in the previous video we also did the same thing but there's a couple of things i have to note if you try and use Web3 modal like this, you'll get an error that you will see on screen right now. So to fix that, what I had to do was head over to a environment uh, TypeScript file. So I had to create this environment TypeScript file here, redefine this NPM import. Let me just make this bigger. So redefine this, oh geez, redefine this NPM import here. And then, so this optimizes it. And then back in the actual imports, you have to import this new uh, NPM file here, just like this. And this will get rid of the error. So if you import it like this, it will get rid of the error. There are two pieces of code that you need to consider when you're calling from the front end. Number one is the contract address itself. We need to know which contracts we're calling on the blockchain. And the second parameter is what's called the ABI or application binary interface. Similar to an API, it is the actual methods that we're going to be calling on that contract. And it also contains the actual parameters we need to pass through to those methods. So let's head up to chat GPT. Uh, what I'm going to do, copy this, scroll down. Let's ask it. Um, refactor the following code so that it includes a smart contract call and then put it in quotation marks. I'll include this code here in the repository and description below just so you can have it. Actually, we're going to replace, so it's still using, it's still using the Web3 library, I just realized. We're going to replace that with ethers. Replace. The best way to handle these two variables here is to have them in a separate file, which I'll do now. Um, so we'll call it yep, contracts.js. And we'll have const this will be the actual So address and contract ABI. Right, so head over to Etherscan and we will take this contract right here, token tracker, contracts. We can see it's just a bunch of hex code here. So we need to verify and publish it. Now the way you do this is you head over to Remix. And Remix actually caches your contracts. Flatten it again. So let's flatten this. What this does is it spreads out those imports. So we have these elc721.sol and counters.sol imports that we need to spread out or flatten into this one single file. And we need to make sure the Solidity version is all the same. So if I control F, Pragma, Solidity. Let's go through them, so 0 0.8, 0 0.181, we need to get rid of this one, replace it with zero. Right, they're all good now. So, so this is a contract address that we're trying to verify, Solidity single file, and the version, so 0 0.8.0, .0, and the MIT license, agree, continue, paste the code in this box here 
everything else should be left unchecked. There's no constructor arguments that we're passing through to the contract itself. Oh. Unable to connect to the remote server. Okay, so apparently this can just happen on Etherscan. So we'll have to do this another time. But for now, this is just one of the growing pains of blockchain. You know, there's not enough people in the space and the technology is new, it's innovative and things like this happen fairly frequently. So all you can do right now is just wait for the server to come back online. And the ABI should just be a standard ERC721 ABI. So ERC721, remember, is a standard and they all follow the same uh, function calls. So we can just go to here and Google ERC721 ABI. Do this. So we're not going to use all these methods, of course, but there we go. Since we can't call the mint method, since we can't verify the ABI on Goerli scan, what I'm going to do instead is just call a simple read method. We want to read and see who are the token owners. Right now, it's just me. So get, should we get or owners? Should be like some method that calls owner off. Okay. In fact, let's ask chat GPT, which ERC721 method can we call to get the owner of an NFT? Yep, owner off. So owner off method, which takes a token ID. Excellent. So this is exactly what we want to do. And it even tells us how to do it. So we can literally just copy this code here and where we are calling mint, instead of mint, let's just call this function here. Now this is using a different provider, JSON RPC provider. We don't need to do that because we've already got this here. We can simply just call this. And we want token ID one. And if we head back to our Vita application, we call it get get owner so we'll turn this to a state variable so token owner set owner perfect thank you github copilot and then here we can do set owner to the owner so next to here, we're going to just have another P tag, token owner is, so your wallet address and token owner. Now these two should match. Hit save, refresh the application. Refresh it. Okay, so now we're connected and your wallet address is this here. So this is mine. And then right now the token owner is undefined. Let's hit get owner. And there we go. Now these two match. And that's how you can call smart contracts on the front end. For more Web3 content, check out how to make a Web3 Shopify app.